Hello. Okay, welcome to my kitchen. Um, my name is Caroline Vigneron. It's my real name below. Uh, the name of the channel is my real name. Um, I'm French and I've been having uh, shamanic practices for a few years. I am no shaman, although I'm gonna hold my fantastic buzzard feather as I speak because it, I think it could help me focus and be a little more diplomatic than than average, than, than, than I'm used to. Anyway, so um, it's hard work, you know, diplomacy. Um, so I still consider myself as a beginner. I took notes, so I'm going to read some of my notes because otherwise it's uh, terrible. I'm no shaman, and by the way, I'm autistic. I'm not just French, so if you feel like I'm struggling speaking, it's because actually I'm struggling speaking even in French. Um, yeah, I, I think that the psychedelic community should be more about, you know, diversity. So here I go, I share as French, as a woman, as a person with a disability. Please bear with me, I don't... I have just this stumble on this uh, Aubrey Marcus uh, post on Facebook today. And, um, you know, big muscles, big tattoos, big microphones, successful entrepreneur. I'm nothing of the kind, really nothing of the kind, I'm sorry. So I don't have any big microphones, so I'm supposed, I'm, I mean, I'm making efforts to speak a little louder than I'm used to because, you know, for this camera it's best. So yeah, I'm struggling and I know that it's annoying to listen to someone who's struggling speaking up. I know, <laughs> I know. But, well, I'm making the effort to speak, so maybe you will make the effort to listen. Uh, first and foremost, uh, first and foremost, disclaimer, entheogens. I'm not going to make a lecture about entheogens. It's not the topic of the video. The topic is how to do a ceremony, how I do a ceremony. Um, so, of course, uh, it's illegal in my country here in France. So I must not do it, you must not do it if you're French. Uh, if you're in a country uh, where it's illegal, you must not touch those substances, of course. But in case you'd be in a country or a state where it's decriminalized, you're lucky and maybe you're going to feel like uh, experimenting someday. Um, and I really do wish for legalization, actually, and regulation of those substances. Um, in, align in alignment with what the science says about them. Um, I have the right to grow my own tobacco. I hope that someday I will have the right to grow my own mushrooms. Um, so then, the ceremony. Um, what do I mean by doing a ceremony, holding a ceremony? And as my definition today, it's, ev it's evolved, you know, I, I've well, uh, it's a work in progress, you know, so it's today we are May the 5th, uh, 2021. This is my definition so far. It might evolve. It's evolved, you know, in the past. It shall go on evolving, maybe. So, um, a ceremony. It's about, holding a ceremony is about using a trance state, a rather intense trance state, to create and hold a sacred space, sort of a diplomatic ground, in which I encounter spirits, negotiate with them for the greater good. Um, so uh, holding a ceremony means officiating, being an officiant, and working. Uh, so it's nothing about uh, shamanic or spiritual uh, tourism. It's not about exploring the spirit world uh, for insights at random um, and for fun or for the thrill of it. Um, <coughs> it's not about exploring the mind and please try explore your heart for a change someday. Uh, everybody in the psychedelic community is all about exploring the mind, exploring the mind, exploring the mind. It's like compulsive, you know. Explore your heart for a change, really, and your environment. Um, 
And it's definitely not about enjoying the show, it's about working. So I'm aware that even though my definition, my defini my definition tries to be short and sharp, it may be misleading because just the word trans might be understood in various ways. In core shamanism, uh, people practice uh, most of the time, I believe, they practice what I would call active imagination. Uh, a sort of daydreaming, more or less intense, but still daydreaming or active imagination. And they go meet up with some archetypes somewhere in their head. And there's nothing wrong with that. And yes, it can be therapeutic, it can be relaxing and so on. But it's not what I call a trance. A trance will go as far sometimes as to what um, what Christians Christian people might call possession, and go as far as to what psychiatrists call um, uh, what is it dissociation, dissociative state. Uh, when I say intense, I mean intense and hard to master. When I say spirits, some people might understand again some archetypes, some subconscious stuff somewhere in your head. When I mean, when I say spirit, I mean spirits, entities around me, you know, uh, I acknowledge them as beings of their own, not just some subconscious part of my own self. And when I say for the greater good, I don't mean just my own healing. Um, the healing of my, you know, my clan or harmonizing my relationships with people around me. I mean, for the greater good, I mean, like, the greater picture, uh, the dead, the undead, the humans, the non-humans, the bees, the elephants, the planet in its entirety and beyond. Um... I watched some videos, I often try to find new videos on the topic of how to do a ceremony and there are not that many, um, there are a few and I get kind of disappointed each time because it can be one hour long uh, videos, two hour long videos <laughs> and you hear people speak of entheogens um, and to some really long extent. Um, they will basically make lectures about what are entheogens and how to use them and what do they do, what are they, their effects and so on. But when it comes to, you know, on a practical level, uh, how to do a ceremony, uh, to sum it up, the feeling that I get is that it comes down to uh, you, lit up a, you lit up a candle, you lit up some, you, you burn some incense, you make a little prayer and then you go lay down in silent darkness or with a face mask like I've got this picture on my computer at the moment of Aubrey, 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 Marcus successful entrepreneur, podcaster and so on uh, big tattoos, big microphones uh, and he's laying down uh, obviously supposed that he posted something like 14 hours ago uh, on Facebook, uh, he's laying down on some maybe organic faton or um, an organic type of mattress and wearing a face mask, laying down on what's, what looks like an expensive carpet next to an expensive couch, next to an expensive piano <laughs> surrounded with expensive decorations and, and he calls this uh, a ceremony. Uh, Westerners go to the Amazon and they participate in ayahuasca ceremonies. They lay down in the dark for an evening or several evenings. Um, and then they go home and they go on doing it on their own. They go on calling this a ceremony except that the ayahuasca is gone from the, you know, from, from the setting. A ceremony is called that because there's an efficient in charge of things. And so if you're just laying down in silent darkness, in my opinion, it shouldn't be called a ceremony. It, it can be called a ritual, 
a ritualization of, you know, a session, uh, of some process of some kind. But calling this a ceremony, in my opinion, it's a bit, it's a bit, it's not appropriate in my opinion. Um, so I used to ritualize uh, my sessions. I, I call this sessions, and I used to, I've always ritualized things a bit, um, asking for protection, etc., uh, and for healing, asking for healing, always. Um, uh, but I moved on, um, and maybe you will too. Who knows? No. Um, life is about learning and evolving. Um, I got the idea, thinking of it, that calling that practice, that kind of practice of laying in the dark, you know, you, you ingest the substance and then you go lay, lay down, and calling this a ceremony might, has, uh, might help us feel good about it. Like, we're not doing drugs at all. You know, we are healing ourselves and using sacred medicines, and we're not addicts. You know, we're not punks basically, which means most of the time people equate punk um, with addict and violent people, totally uneducated and wild, and when actually a punk can be more educated than you, whomever you are. <laughs> they can have, you know, PhDs, and they can even be straight edge, which means doing no drugs at all, no substance. Uh, no alcohol, no tobacco, no whatever. Uh, it's an interesting world, the, the punk world. Um, so yeah, a calling that sort of practice, you know, laying down in silent darkness after having ingested some substance m might be a way to, you know, differentiate us from addicts. And it could be um, some form of what I call toxicophobia. I'm not sure it exists, the word exists in English. Um, but it's like homophobia, except that it's, uh, you know, in regard to uh, addicts. Um, yeah, and maybe someone like the Professor Carl Hart uh, addressed that sort of issues. Uh, in the psychedelic community when he writes about how he does uh, hearing from time to time. Hearing from time to time. Um, so, uh, holding a ceremony, more details. Um, so yeah, it's about, to me, it's about officiating, um, using tools, praying, eventually chanting, whatever. Um, it's about being, you know, active not just laying down. Uh, look at how ayahuasca work, work, how they work, how Maria Sabina worked. There's a, a cool documentary about her. Uh, it's called uh, Maria Sabina in English on YouTube. It shows how she worked, and it's quite, uh, it's quite interesting. On a dirt floor, you know. <laughs> on a dirt floor in a little shack in the mountains, not in a fancy apartment filled with expensive decoration and so on. Um, and it's about encountering spirits, which means, of course, acknowledge, acknowledging, uh, ha, acknowledging them as entities, beings of their own. And this is how you can negotiate with them and work at having better relationship with them. It takes to acknowledge them as entities, real stuff, not just something like subconscious stuff in your head. Um, then, uh, standing up. Yeah, it's about standing up and speaking up. At least sitting up and speaking up. Um, so it takes to be able to make some sounds and using your voice is a good way to start, you know, words. Uh, words can be powerful tools. Uh, I like, um, I quite like a, a, an anthropologist called um, Jeremy Narby, who said once in a lecture um, <coughs> that shamans are 
uh, essentially people who make noise. And I wish to add, it doesn't necessarily have to be, has to be, um, doesn't have to be loud. It can be very subtle noise. It works too. Um, so yeah, standing up, if you have trouble standing up, um, <coughs> your dose might be too high. Um, it could be because of low blood pressure. If um, you know some antigens have a diuretic effect, they make you pee. And if you don't watch out for your hydration, if you don't hydrate yourself, drink water, uh, veggie juice, or whatever, you may end up dehydrated with low blood pressure <coughs> in results from of the dehydration. And therefore, you may have trouble standing up. So watch out for your dose, watch out for your, you know, hydrate, keep yourself hydrated. And um, it might be also, if you don't, if you can't stand up, it's because maybe you try to stand up on plastic. Whether it's your plastic uh, soles, uh, plastic carpet, however expensive it may be, you know, if it's polyester, and a plastic floor and so on, it's all plastic, all synthetic, it doesn't help. Uh, grounding uh, on an electrical level helps a great deal standing up. It can be on some tiles, just like here, old tiles, or outdoors on, you know, just barefoot on the grass. Uh, it helps. So, um, yeah, it's about finding the right dose, you know, intense but not too intense, and um, and really being daring, being like a priest or priestess. It can be done alone, really. Some, you know, a priest, a Christian priest, a Catholic priest, will hold a mass. I think something like twice a day. Even if there's nobody in the church, they will hold the mass, no matter what. Um, it's their job, it's part of their job. It doesn't take to have an audience. You can be the officiant and the consultant at the same time. Uh, it's totally possible. Um, so, uh, yeah, again, it's, a bit, it, it's about working. And this notion of work, um, doing some work, not just some healing work on your old traumas, you know. Um, the only person that I hear speak of it in the psychedelic community is Kathleen Harrison. Uh, uh, Ex-Mrs. McKenna. So I recommend you her lectures and interviews. Uh, then, the setting. Yeah, importance of the setting. I don't believe you can hold a real true ceremony in a big city. If you cannot see the stars, it's, uh, you know, it's problematic in my opinion. So watch, watch how Maria Sabina worked. It's, it's, a, it's, a good, it's a good way to get an idea of what I call a good setting. And I have an article on, on um, what I consider the ideal setting. I call it the Hobbit way. I will put down a, a link to it uh, in the description box uh, of the video. <coughs> um, yeah, it can be about uh, giving massage to people, massaging, m maybe giving a, giving a massage to your own self or to your pets. Also, try it out. It can be very, very, it can teach us a lot. Pets can be great teachers. Um, and so um, this laying down in silent darkness technique that has become the clinical setting, you know, the Terence McKenna setting has become the clinical setting, basically. Um, I believe it's good for beginners because it's rather safe, except if you're on a high dose in total, real total darkness, then it can be dangerous because if you have to get up to go pee, you know, watch out. Um, it's best to have at least one little light, 
lit up in a corner somewhere. Um, so in my opinion, it's good for beginners. So if you've been doing it for 20 years, maybe you could be moving on someday or, you know, at least think of it, maybe. Um, then, um, yeah, I, I stumbled on a, on a quote by a methodic healer called uh, Natalia Martinez, uh, I stumbled on that on a web board. It's a quote from a, a, a movie called The Little Saints by Oliver Quintanilla. And uh, Natalia Martinez called this uh, laying in the dark, um, eventually listening to some music with eyes closed. She called this the lazy way. It's a methodic healer saying that, you know. So think of it. Uh, please. <laughs> you please think of it um, if you if you're willing to work you know and you realize that something you've been doing for 20 years is actually called the lazy way and you're willing to work uh, <laughs> think of it um, I will also put in the description of the video I will put uh, links uh, links to uh, the two articles the big articles that I wrote on the ceremony and it's quite long articles and it's all in French, I'm sorry, but I guess you can use Google Translate to try and translate it. Then, at last, um, opening space. Um, it helps, in my opinion, I believe it helps uh, to create a sacred space uh, to address the directions. How do I create this sacred space? How do I kind of open the ceremony, I address the directions. This is where I start. I use this, my bird of prey feather, not just this one, I have a few. Uh, I use my bird of prey feathers to bless the directions because it's a great blessing tool, a great blessing tool, bird of prey feathers. And I have a video on some of my basic tools, so just go look that up if you're so inclined. Um, I also use a staff. Um, the staff in the right hand and uh, and the feather in the left hand. And I bless the directions with the feather. I ask them their blessing and to bless my space and to watch over my space. Please work with me. Watch over my space. Bring me your blessings and, and, and your teachings. Basically, that's about it. And I um, start with east, then south, west, north, and sky and ground. And I consider them, you know, in my world view, uh, to me they are spirits of their own. Of their own. It's not easy to be French, seriously. So um, I, I acknowledge them as spirits, as entities, as persons, you know. And um, I believe it's very different to address the directions and acknowledge them as spirits of their own, entities of their own. It's very different from uh, inviting the people of the East, the mountains of the East and the elementals of the East. I've seen such things uh, in videos, uh, core shamanism videos, people inviting whatever stuff there, in, there is in the East and not East itself. That's too bad. Um, if you're indoors, um, again, the setting is important because if you're indoors, all windows closed. Um, and if you are in a rather modern house. Um, it can be 50 years old. It, it's rather modern house. Here it's uh, about 100 years old. It's really old. Um, if you're surrounded with uh, modern materials, uh, building materials, you know, like concrete and metal and all of that stuff, it can hinder the perception of the directions. There are well, electromagnetic phenomena, 
and very, very, um, very weak, a very low, very super low, ultra low um, frequencies. Um, and yeah, their the perception that we have of them may be hindered by the materials around us. So uh, the perception of the directions will be way, way, way better outdoors. Indoors, it may they may be totally kind of erased and absent, and even you know in a very deep trance, you might be unable to contact them because the materials around hinder the perceptions. Am I done? I think I am. I'm checking my notes. I think I think I did it. If you have questions, I will leave the comments below open. Uh, if you have critics, questions, um, constructive critics, preferably, please. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, the greater good, again. I, I cannot um, insist and repeat enough to please think of the greater good and please uh, consider working for the greater good, not just your own personal traumas, because, you know, while you're busy healing your personal traumas, uh, the bees are disappearing. The insects are disappearing. All wild animals are disappearing. The birds are disappearing. The forests are disappearing. And when you're done, you know, in a distant future, when you're done healing your trauma, well, eventually all of the wild, all of the insects will have gone. And what kind of healing can we attain if all the insects are gone, if all the hunt is gone, if all of that is gone? It's, it's not possible. You know, we won't have food anymore, so <laughs> just think of it. Uh, what kind of healing can there be? Um, for all of us, and I mean humans, non-humans, etc. Uh, what kind of healing can there be without the bees, without the insects? So, of course, it's important to heal our traumas, but it's also important to keep in mind that it's not possible, I believe it's not possible to attain a satisfying healing kind of level um, as long as we live in a sick world. Um, yeah, this is, this is my main concern when I, when I speak of the greater good. This is the kind of thing I have in mind. Take care. Bye.